are defenders of the blue program. It is a closed program. Um, the way that the youth can uh, uh, participate is if if you guys want to uh, be a part, we need to get um, uh, motivational letters. So essentially, we approach schools, we give them a questionnaire, and we leave it up to the students to actually show us why they want to be on the program. Um, we ask the, them questions about the sea, what it means for them to be connected to the sea. Have they ever been to the sea? Um, what does the ocean mean to them? And a lot of the times, what we found is that there are always, most of the time, fond memories of the ocean. Now and again, there's some traumatic um, events that do happen around the beach, but the um, majority of them are all fond memories. And so the, the kids write a motivational letter to us. Um, all four directors then read them and we have, have a nice meeting and um, uh, we choose students from there. Um, we try and promote out the box thinking. So one of these students last uh, in our last um, Defenders program did a piece of artwork and she got in purely for thinking differently. Um, she did a beautiful sketch of what mother nature looked, meant to her. So it was, it was quite, uh, quite inspiring actually. And that's the type of, we want the type of student who's going to shine and who wants to be involved. We have had instances where we've had kids um, free, almost freeloading. So we had to try and keep it very focused and get the kids that wanted to be there. And they do that through a motivational letter. Regarding the uh, community at large, um, the community work we do that everyone can join our, our beach cleans, um, which happen every month. So that's how uh, the, gen, uh, the general public and community at large can join us. Um, the Defenders of the Blue is run by trained um, staff, so that is actually a closed, a closed program. Our biggest challenge actually has been getting people to our beach cleans. Um, obviously, with the lockdown and the restrictions that have been placed on public gatherings, it's been very difficult to um, get anyone to our beach cleans. Um, with the result that we've had small teams um, and sometimes we've had to cancel because of the, the, the number of waves that you had with COVID. Um, when it comes to the DOB program, um, the last program didn't finish because there was an outbreak of COVID at the school. So the, obviously the schools pulled the kids back um, uh, for their safety and uh, of course. Um, when it comes to ocean pollution, during lockdown, the ocean celebrated. There was no one on the beaches. There was no litter being thrown on the ground. There was no litter in the streets. No one was on the streets. So what we found was a, a, a visible drop in the amount of litter that we picked up. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, be allowed to check the rivers during hard lockdown. Um, what we found there was that because of the hard lockdown, a lot of the services that the council and the city was providing were no longer being done, which meant that a lot of the um, surface litter that is normally kit, uh, swept up in the streets actually ended up in the canals and waterways. So COVID had a very big effect, positively and negatively, when it came to service delivery and then the amount of human impact that was directly a result of people not being on the beach and on the streets. Um, most of the litter that we find here comes from the streets and it is washed down into the canals and waterways of Cape Town and then ends up in, on the beaches and in the ocean. It's a tough question. Um, the major players in the country have been quite slow in adopting um, no plastic regimes. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but you'll find that food lovers have changed to plastic bags, which is great. They no longer have plastic bags. They've gone to paper bags. Um, pick and pay, shop, write and checkers, unfortunately. The paper bags you have to ask for and they tend to hide them. So there's a little bit of up and down. What we find with the local smaller businesses that we approach, we have have a far more positive reception because they control their buying habits. So the bigger corporations, when it comes to 
plastics and uh, web sales, very little change has actually happened over the last couple of years when it comes to the big retail companies. Um, even Woolworths still sells plastic bags, and they have they have done a lot of work towards the anti-plastic um, movement. But still, their packaging also has many many clamshells in there. I mean, almost everything is <laughs> wrapped in plastic. So it's until there is actual. Um, governmental and legislative change. Um, I'm not so sure uh, anything's going to change anytime soon. Um, this is why we try and approach it uh, from the consumer's perspective and just don't buy plastics in the first place. Um, we hold as consumers a lot more power than everyone realizes. Um, if we don't buy a product, it's not going to be sold. So um, we try, well, we try and advocate for uh, purchasing no single-use plastics. Preferably go to outlets that have uh, bare fruit and veg uh, that you can put in a box. Fruit and veg is great for that. Um, uh, Pick and Pay has started to do the, the, the raw um, non-packaged areas, but it is still a minute, minute um, section in the entire shop. So, um, it's very difficult not to buy plastic nowadays because the alternatives just aren't there in this country. Um, and also, we also have a very challenging aspect where because we have quite a poor population, one rand fifty or two rand fifty for a plastic bag versus fifty cents for a plastic bag for a plastic. So, two rand fifty for a paper bag versus fifty cents for a paper bag, a plastic bag. Um, makes a big difference. And, and what you find is that they automatically go to the cheaper uh, bag. Um, and that's a social, socioeconomic problem. Um, and until we make it cheap enough for them not to notice the difference, again, it's, it's a bit of an uphill battle. Effects on marine life are extensive. Uh, more than 100 million marine animals are affected and killed by marine plastic every year. Um, that is globally, 100 million. That is a lot of animals dying from plastic ingestion. And most of it is through plastic injection, ingen, in, ingestion, sorry. Um, otherwise, uh, essentially they eat uh, the plastics thinking that it's food. Um, it's it's everywhere. There isn't a single beach on the, on the entire planet that has no plastic. There is plastic everywhere. Every single beach, every single shoreline on this, this entire planet has plastic pollution, whether it be microplastics, which you don't normally see, or your bottles and plastic bags, shoes, slip slops, uh, crates, you name it, it is all there. The most remotest beaches that no human has ever touched indirectly has been touched by by. Uh, marine plastic. Um, so the only strategies we, we, we should be looking at is stopping the production of plastic. Um, currently, the um, petrochemical companies who supply the raw materials for plastic want to boost their production by 40% over the next 10, 10 years. That is a staggering amount of increase of plastic production. No one is trying to slow down the plastic production at all. Um, and so until we stop the tap of plastic being produced, it's, um, it's going to be very, very challenging to see any type of change. But um, we believe at See the Bigger Picture that the change always starts with you. And your little change can make, have a very big difference in the long run. If we have 8 billion people not buying a plastic bag that day, that is 8 billion plastic bags. Um, if we have 1 million people picking up one piece of plastic a day, that's 1 million pieces of plastic. You know, we have to start somewhere. Um, we are forever eternally hopeful that um, what we do makes a difference. Um, and it's an uphill battle, but we will eventually prevail. And we really, really hope that... Um, the general public out there, come and join us, um, come and support us, donate to us. You know, these things aren't, uh, are not, the organizations are not uh, freebies, so there are things that we need to pay for. 
Um, but, you know, we can do this together. This is a, a global problem and it, there is a global solution. And that starts with us at home. Plans. Well, we hope COVID disappears altogether. We, really, <laughs> we won't have anything to do with that. But I, I, once the once the world returns to normal, um, we will continue doing our monthly beach cleans. Um, we really would like to expand our program to um, to have more more uh, defenders of the blue programs. Um, for this to happen, we need funding, and for at the moment, all of our directors and all of our volunteers all have full-time jobs. So we would love to do this full-time, um, but you know we still have to eat and put food on the table for our families. So um, that'll only come with uh, major funding. But we have, we have big plans on uh, hoping to expand um, next year when things quieten down with COVID. Thank you.